Hello. Today, let's solve this interesting problem. Before we move on, you can pause this video and make a guess first, and also you can try it. But this solution is not very easy to guess. So let's get started. Here is a problem. So first, let's rewrite the right-hand side. Because we have this notation for the power index, so we can let n equals to square root 2. And then the right-hand side can be written into this way. And note here, because the base for the right-hand side is 2, so we let x equals to 2 to the power p. And here, p is real numbers. So instead of solving x, we solve for p. And then we need to deal with the left-hand side. But note here, because the left-hand side is a power tower, so we need to be careful to deal with it. And let's look at this red term first. So by plugging x equals to 2 to the power p, we got here. And then we simplify it, so we got 2 to the power 20 times p. And then we plug in to replace this red term. And next, we plug in the substitution to replace x in the base. And then we simplify it, so we got here. So from these two parts, we got this equation. Because they have the same base, so that means their power index must be equal. Then we got this equation. And for the right-hand side, the square root 2 is equal to 2 to the power 1 half. And then we write the reciprocal into the negative power, so we got 2 to the power negative 1 half. Again, because the right-hand side has the base, which is 2, then we use the same trick here. We define p equals to 2 to the power k. So instead of solving for p, we solve for k. After we plug in the p equals to 2 to the power k, we got here. And then for the right-hand side, we can simplify it, so we got here. And next, we put these two parts together, so we got this equation. Because the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this equation have the same base, so their power index must be equal. Then we got this equation. So far, maybe you want to do the guess and try to find this solution. But in the next slide, I will show you. Actually, by doing some analysis, we can rule out other possibilities and get the answer in a more logic way. I copy them here. And let's look at this equation. The left-hand side is negative 1 half. And if left-hand side is negative, then the right-hand side must be negative. If the right-hand side is negative, then k must be less than 0. So we rule out all the positive numbers for k. And here we claim k cannot be rational fractions. What I mean the rational fractions do not include the integers. Because if k is rational fraction, then this term will be irrational. And we know k is rational. So the sum of the rational and the irrational will be irrational. But for the left-hand side, the negative one-half is rational. So we got rational equals to irrational. This is impossible. So we got a contradiction here. So in this case, we can rule out all the rational fractions for k. And now we have two possibilities for k, which is negative integer or negative irrational numbers. So first, we let k to be negative integer. And I will talk about the irrational case later. But note here, we let k to be negative integer, but it cannot be very negative. For example, if we plug in k equals to negative 4, then we got right-hand side equals to negative 2.75. But left-hand side is negative 1 half, so it not hold. And if you let k to be a negative integer, which is less than negative 4, then the right-hand side will be less than the negative 2.75. So this equation cannot hold. So we can rule out all the negative integers for k, which is less than negative 4. So we only have three candidates left here. If k is negative 1, then the right-hand side equals to 9. So it doesn't work. And if k is negative 2, then the right-hand side equals to 3. So it doesn't work. And if k equals to negative 3, then the right-hand side equals to negative 1 half, which is equal to the left-hand side. So the negative 3 is our solution. And then we plug in k back to our equation. So we can solve for p, which is equal to 1 over 8. 
and next we plug in p back to our initial substitution. So we got the final answer for x, which is equal to 2 to the power 1 over 8. But if you remember, just now I haven't talked about the irrational case for k. So we have to prove our solution is unique. And if we can prove it's unique, then we can rule out all the irrational cases for k. And the answer is yes, our solution is unique. Because if you look at the right-hand side of this equation, which is highlighted in the green box, then we can calculate the derivative for this function. And the derivative is always positive. So that means this function is increasing monotonically. So there is at most one solution for this equation. Therefore, our solution is unique. And don't forget to subscribe my channel and give a like. That's all for today, and thank you for watching.